given in death uh, for standing for Christ and for what is righteous and godly. And so take up the battle. Here, if, if you turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4, and we'll be considering these verses 1 through 8. Take up the battle. Let's pray. Lord, as we have thought about some, just briefly, about Memorial Day and thinking about uh, some of the events that will be going on tomorrow as the day is celebrated, we thank you for America. We thank you for those that have given their lives for a strong military today to defend against those that would seek to destroy us individually and collectively as a country and as people and as families. We do pray for our military today, that your protective hand would be upon them, that you would promote and prosper our military. Lord, lest the enemy make some great discovery and have an upper hand. Lord, but for your blessing, we are, we are vulnerable. And so we look to you, Lord, in this Memorial Day weekend, look into the past and look into the future. Thank you for those spiritually that stood in the gap, that made up the army to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, challenge us as we've sought today from Paul, from your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If you have your half sheet there, we'd like to take that out and fill in the blanks as we go along. I'll have the red words on the screen and uh, underlined for you to do that. Um, Maybe you're planning to go to a Memorial Day parade tomorrow or some gathering. Um, we think of Canastota at 10 o'clock tomorrow. The parade starts at the high school and goes to uh, Clark Park down here in Route 5, where it intersects Peterborough. Um, great opportunity for the Memorial Day parade. Or Petersboro will have a 10 a.m. parade and then to decorate the Veterans Memorial. Great opportunity there in Peterborough. Or Chittenango, 10 a.m. Uh, starts at uh, St. Patrick's Cemetery and then at 10.30, Oakwood Cemetery. 11 o'clock at the American Legion there in Chittenango. Those are great opportunities. But, um, or maybe some other place close to your home if, if you're inclined to do so. But uh, taking up the battle, uh, we think here in, in uh, looking ahead on this Memorial Day weekend. Let's, it says here in 2 Timothy 4.1, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing, and his kingdom. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. And so we're given a challenge here. Notice, first of all, that it is a charge. Charge, which means intensely testify through and through and to bear solemn witness to this truth. We are charged to stand as soldiers, if you will, to stand fast. And he's going to give us these charges. This charge is presented here. What is this charge? Well, first, it's who our commander is, that we would follow the Lord. It says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ. We're charged because we have a commander to follow, someone that calls the shots. I want to ask you today, are you paying attention to the commander? As people go into battle, it is essential that in any battle that the Commands are given, even if they seem improper to the to the, the man down the line. The man that is in charge, the commander, understands the bigger scene of what is going on and will give direction that must be followed. And when it's followed, then the army works together well. Well, the commander gives that direction. He is our leader. He's the one that gives those calls. Are you listening to him? It says here, I charge you therefore before God, God the creator, the God of heaven and earth. But his name is also, it says here, in the Lord Jesus Christ. Is he your Lord? You say, well, I'll take him as Jesus, which means Savior. I'll accept his forgiveness. Yeah, I want my ticket to heaven. I want to be right with with God. But is he your your Christ? Is he, he the anointed one that paid for that upon the cross? That is our mediator. Is he also not just Jesus Christ, but is he Lord Jesus Christ? Is he the one that is our boss? No, we don't like to be bossed. We like independence. We like it our way. I'm talking in in our daily living sometimes. We don't like that speed limit when it goes down from 45 to 30 to 25. Or that school zone, 15. Is that what a school zone is, 15? 
We like it our way. You know, but when it comes to living for God, God is the leader. He is the one that is in charge. Matthew 28, our leader challenges us with our marching orders, if you'd care to look there. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. Matthew 28, and verse 18. We find there at the end of Jesus' ministry, just uh, before he ascends to heaven, we find the last challenge recorded by Matthew. He says, And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority. Did you hear that? Wait a minute. Did you hear that word, all authority? He is the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our commander. We are to surrender to him, uh, surrender what we want, what we enjoy, what we think is best, what our attitude is or what our ideas are. We surrender that to God because he is God. All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth, Jesus says. Verse 19, go therefore, go therefore, because of this, we are told to go, we are told to march, we are told to move forward. And what are we to do? And make disciples of all nations, of all the world. That's why we support the Pittsburgh Centennial. That's why we support the Times in Ohio. That's why we support, I'm not going to say it right, Kawaza? How, how do you say that? Piazza? It, you know who I'm talking about. I'm not, somebody told me the other day, I'm not quite getting it right. I'm just going with it, right? And, uh, but they're working with the Spanish-speaking people there. They know Spanish. Maybe you know Spanish. But they're using that ability to serve God. And so we're supporting this. We're told to go and make disciples of all nations. Aren't you glad you don't have to go to Kenya? Well, I've got to obey God and I've got to go to Kenya. Well, we're, we're supporting someone that is. Praise God for that. Make disciples of all nations. And then there's that evidence. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. There's the evidence that they've been saved, an outward show of, a, of an inward change. Oh, the waters of baptism doesn't wash any sin off. Sin's left floating in the baptismal when we're done. But, but when we're baptized, it shows that I'm serious about this. I'm willing to get wet in front of people. I'm willing to show that I've had a change inside. I've died to myself. I've been buried by the water, is the picture, and that I've rose again. And I'm going to live for God now. Have you made that decision? Do you know the Lord is your Savior? Have you died to yourself? You've buried what you wanted to do. And you just kind of like that sin. And you want to do things your way. And that attitude is whatever. No, you're going to bury that. And we're going to rise and live for God. We're going to live differently now. It's going to be Jesus' way. It's going to be God in me and through me. God help me. And I trust that's our desire every day. Teaching them to observe, verse 20 says, all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. And there's the last word in the book, amen. So we're to teach. And so we are giving marching orders to move forward and to obey the Lord. He's not only our commander, is, is our leader, but he's also our judge. Our judge with whom we have to do, for, with whom we're accountable. We need to be ready uh, to stand before him someday. Notice what he says here in 2 Timothy 4. He says, I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing. See, there's a, there's a judgment day coming. We will be held accountable. It, it, it's not that it just doesn't matter. You believe what you want to believe. I'll believe what I want to believe. I'll do what I feel like today, and, and you do what you feel like. We're all happy. We're all buds. That's not, there's a judgment day coming. And we're going to be held accountable for what we have said, what we have thought, what we have looked at, how we have obeyed the Lord. There's a judgment day coming when every knee, the Bible says, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, that we'll be ready for that. There's the judge. 1 Corinthians 3, if you turned over there, I have it here on the screen, or you can look. I like to look in my own Bible. That helps me when I do that. But I, I've, I've already done that, so let me just put it up here. 1 Corinthians 3.11. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. So he's the foundation. Now, we know him as our Lord. He's our commander. Different names today. He's the foundation. He's our commander. That's the basis. We're going to build on him. We're going to live for him. We're going to obey him. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, each one's work will become clear 
For the day will declare it because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on endures, he will receive a what? A reward. Say it with me. A reward. If, it, if, it, if what we have done in living for God and walking with God as our commander, as our Lord and Savior, what we have done to, to obey him, obey those marching orders, there's going to be, that's going to be the gold and the silver and the precious stones. There's going to be a what? A reward. Now, is that because we're so wonderful? No. It's just because God says, I'm saving you, and now I'm in you, and I will help you to do right as uh, he's told us what to do, and now he'll help us to do right. And then after we did it, he's going to reward us for doing it. Because God loves us so much. Yeah. But as his people, it also says, back up there, if anyone's work is burned, if anyone's work is burned, if we have that wood hand stubble, that, that stuff that doesn't, isn't really valuable, we, had a, we blew our attitude off, we did our own thing, or, or we didn't quite obey God, we thought nobody knew, maybe nobody else did, but God always knows, right? If anyone's work is burned, he will what? Suffer? Loss. Let's say it. Let's say it will suffer. Loss, yes. We've got we to gotta swallow. Think about that. But he himself will be saved. Yet so as through fire. If we're a child of God, we're not going to lose our salvation. That's not what this judgment is for. If we're born again, then we will be judged according to our reward. We can look to God for that. He's our leader. He's our judge. And he's our king. He's our king. It says here in 2 Timothy 4, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing. He's coming back. He's going to appear. And his kingdom. He's the king. He's the one that rules over the kingdom. Come on, says God. Oh, people do their own thing right now a lot of times. And God is patient and, and lets the world get away with it. And, and boy, our, our country is, you know, in some ways headed in a direction that, that's not in line with God's word. But um, it, let us, with our heart, and with all of our living, support his kingdom as it were. Right now we're building the church, the kingdom to come. But uh, let's live for him for his heavenly kingdom's sake. He's the king. Well, we're going to take up the battle because he's our commander. That's our charge. We're charged also, uh, I call it our confrontation, how we engage the war. Our confrontation is get the word out. Ephesians 6.17 supports that idea. It says, take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. That's speaking of our Christian armor. We're to take a sword, as it were. And what's our sword? No, not a sword. This is it right here, the Word of God. This is how we uh, do our battle. This is how we defend ourselves. This is how we advance the kingdom of God right here. It's not a literal sword that is killing people. That's going on in the world. That's not God's way. We're to take the sword of the Spirit. That's the battle right there. So our confrontation, we're to be speakers or to be speaking the word. We're to be speaking the word. Notice verse 2, it says, Preach the word. Preach the word. We are to herald the word. We are to get the word out. Notice it's when it's convenient, when it's easy, but also when it's not convenient. How are you doing with talking to people about the Lord at work or at school or your neighbor or your relatives? How are you doing with that? You ever talk to them about eternal things? What's going to happen when you die? believe in heaven? Do you know who Jesus is? Do you, do you have a Bible? Have you ever read the Bible? Do you, have, do you go to church? Hey, have you ever heard of Heritage Baptist Church? Hey, why don't you come with me to Heritage Baptist Church? I'll pick you up next Sunday. Next Sunday, I'll pick you up and take you to lunch. Boy, we're really getting out there now, huh? And, uh, but you know, there's some ideas. And uh, just to reach out, to be speakers of the word and engage people, and then to talk about what God's word says. We're to take that message into all the world. We are to be speaking the word. We are to be promoting the word. Promoting the word. It says, notice here it says, preach the word, be ready in season, out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. The challenge is to action. To action. Convince people. We're to be actively involved. It's an action here to convince people. To convince them that there is a standard. 
to convince them and to talk to them that there is a God. That you can say, look out there. How can those trees stand without leaves all winter long and then they just start growing? How, how did all of this get here? Where did we come from? Oh, there was a Big Bang. Wait a minute, where'd the Big Bang, you believe that? Where'd the Big Bang come from? Where's the stuff that the Big Bang was made of? And we can start to engage people and talk to them about these things and to talk that through and to get some good books out there that shows that um, there's been books written by, by people that were just scientists and they, they started studying stuff and they're just like, there's got to be a God. I just read an article, great article this week. And there's a, a, I was thinking of the book written that all of our human uh, organs and, and systems can't, can't be individually developed. They depend on each other. They're so refined. We can talk about these things and make a defense and, and uh, encourage people to believe on the Lord. You know, a lot of people say they don't believe the Bible, but guess what? A lot of those people have never even touched a Bible or cracked it open to read the Bible. And so if we will encourage them to read the Bible, many people would go, wow. And uh, God begins to work in their life, draws their heart to him. And so he challenges to action to get that word out. Now let me say specifically, this is written by Paul here in the scripture to Timothy, his son in the faith, that Timothy as a fellow pastor would keep doing this. And uh, so specifically we could say this is for a pastor. But this is for all of us as well that application can be made to each of our lives. Preach the word and be ready in season, out of season. Convince also. What does it say? Rebuke. Rebuke for sin. How many of you like to be rebuked for sin? You just love that. You like somebody coming up, you know, to talk about something. You know, I'm concerned about this. about this. And we need to do that. We need to do that in our marriages, right? We need to do that with our kids. We need to do that with our parents, right? We need to do that here in the church at times because we get hurt. And we got to reach out to each other and work that out. But as we're doing that, we need, to, we need to rebuke each other because this is the standard. And if I get out of line, I, I hope that you'll come to me. Let's talk about it. Maybe, I'm, maybe I misspoke or maybe I meant it and I'm, you know, and uh, or, or whatever. Maybe I sometimes we just got to talk about this stuff. We got to rebuke each other sometimes. We're out of line, and maybe I won't like it. Maybe that better not be the case, right? I better humble myself because right here is where the command should be. It's the word of God, and we need to at times rebuke one another and challenge one another. I want to say that if you come to church all the time and you always are just kind of smiley, and you go home and that was good. Probably your Sunday school teacher or your pastor is not doing their job well enough because we ought to have what we call our toes stepped on or we ought to be stretched or we ought to be, to use a biblical term, convicted because the word of God holds a righteous standard and none of us measure up to that, but God's helping us to do better and we're striving for that by the grace of God, right? God's helping us, but there's that rebuke for sin, and he uses me to do that, and he uses you to help me with that. And so let's keep working on it together as we're, as we're challenged by the word of God. And at times, um, you know, God's loving and patient, but, but there's, a, there's a place for firm rebuke. If we've done wrong, let's be ready to accept that if we need to be, to confront the error, to call for change. Notice also, as we're promoting the word, we need to encourage people alongside us. Encourage people alongside us is the idea. And uh, as it says here, convince, rebuke, exhort. Exhort. That means you say to them, hey, I'm going this way. Can I help you along? I, God's word says this, and this is the way to go. Can, can I help you? It's just not all about rebuke and come here, I'm going to you know, really give you some. Is that what it's about? Sometimes there's a place for for just straightforward uh, confrontation, yes, the rebuke. And there's time for challenging people, and yet there's times when we need to come alongside somebody and say, how you doing? Give them a listening ear. How can I help you? Give them some love. On the battlefield, do we find that people uh, just let their wounded go, and they, you know, while you got shot, boom, I'm putting you out of your misery. And as I read this uh this account of, 
uh, Sergeant um, Paul R. Smith. Is that what he did? Oh, if people are wounded back there, just go get them. We're, we're moving on here. No. It's the family of God. We've got to help each other. We need to encourage one another and be a blessing to each other. Encourage each, uh, each other along the way. And we're to be patiently teaching the word. Patiently teaching the word. It says this. There at the end of the verse. With all long suffering and teaching. With all long suffering and teaching. Just be gentle with each other. Help each other along. Are you a patient teacher? Dad, are you a patient teacher? Are you with your kids? Are you a patient teacher? Moms, are you a patient teacher? Let's all be patient with each other. Patient teachers. Notice thirdly then, we take up the battle, the, the torch that's been handed to us. We notice our commander. And then our confrontation, we use the word of God, follow its principles, and help each other to grow in discipleship. And then thirdly, our conduct. Our conduct. In our conduct, we're to serve honorably. Isn't that what a soldier does? They're to be honorable? Isn't that what every soldier wants? We're soldiers for the Lord. We're to keep alert. To be sober, it says here in verse 5. It says, but you be watchful. Or be sober is the idea in all things. Be sober. It's, it's, it's like somebody that's drunk. And... They're just kind of, you know, it's, it's okay, and, and they're just kind of, no, we're to, be, we're to be awake like a soldier that's on duty. The night is long. The seconds tick by. We're to be alert to what's going on. We are in a, with a purpose here. We're to be defending, and so we're to keep a, alert to what's going on in all things. In all things, we're to be alert, things of God. And we're to be alert because of the error. Verses 3 and 4, it says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. The sound doctrine there is health-giving truth. The word sound speaks of healthy. Healthy, healthy principles. Sound doctrine. But according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. We need to be praying for the Supreme Court as they come down in this decision of uh, the way I, I'll read this here, the Supreme Court case regarding the current, current recognized definition of marriage to be announced in the United States. Notice it's a recognized definition. God's already given us the definition of marriage. And so we need to be praying about that. We need to consider that we'll stand according to God's principles and follow him in these matters. Well, not only keep alert, but endure hardness. It's not going to be easy. You think you're going to accept the Lord and live for him? It's going to be all a piece of cake? It's not. We're going to have to endure hardships along the way. Verse 5 goes on to say, but be you watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Endure it. Just keep on. Don't get lazy. Don't get slouchful. Endure hardships. Chapter 1, verses 8 and 9 mentions that, but let's move along. Um, work at presenting the good news. It also says there, do the work of an evangelist. An evangelist is somebody that simply goes around telling good news. Would you like to be a good news bearer or a bad news bearer? Good news, me too. I like taking bad news. I don't like, maybe you've been in some positions where you've had to take some bad news. And that can be really, really hard. That can be heartbreaking. But we like to bring good news. You know what God has? Good news. That Jesus Christ died. He was buried. And that he rose again. And that whoever will call upon the name of the Lord will be saved. That's good news. That's the good news of an evangelist that we take out and tell people. We need to challenge them to keep taking that good news. And then also do our service completely. As it says here, fulfill your ministry. Timothy, fulfill your ministry. Keep going with what you need to do. And then we find in verse 6, offer ourselves freely. Because Paul goes on to say, for I am already being poured out as a drink offering. This is a picture from the Old Testament in Exodus and Leviticus where people would bring a, a drink offering to the altar before God there in the tabernacle or the temple. And they would pour that on a hot fire. And that wet liquid just would be vaporized, steamed up. And he says, as I go and I've already been on trial, and, and 
my end is coming. I'm, I'm going to be killed for the Lord. But he wasn't looking at that like the Roman executioner was going to put his head on the block and take it off. He says, I am going, I'm offering my body to the Lord as a, as a um, drink offering, poured out. That was a picture. That's the way you picture your life. That I'm just, I'm not, I'm not just doing whatever everybody else wants me to do, but I am giving myself, even in the hardest of times, I'm sacrificing myself for the Lord. I'm going to give up my time, of my resources, even my life if I have to. Are you willing to die for the Lord? Those Egyptians, Christians in Libya, who marched out there along the beach and testified that, well, you take my head off, I'm going to go live for the Lord. And they did it. They lived for the Lord, and they died for the Lord. Are we willing to stand in the day of judgment? Well, we need to finish well. Verses 7 and 8 says, I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. The battle will soon be finished. He says, I've kept the fight. It's not always going to be hard. It's not always going to keep on going. This is only the beginning. This life, we are made eternal now. We are made that our life will just go on and on. Not that we're in eternity past. We're not in that sense a God. But our life is going to continue. We have the place of judgment prepared for the devil and his angels, hell, or we have heaven through Jesus Christ. And as we live for God, the battle will soon be over. If we live for another hundred years, the battle will soon be over and we'll go to be with the Lord. Or maybe it'll be much sooner for each of us. But then the reward will be given soon as well. He says, finally there is laid up, verse 8, finally there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Oh, Paul here is looking up to be with the Lord, knowing that he'll be rewarded. Are you looking up? Are you looking up to the Lord to come? The day when you'll be with him. Oh, maybe it'll be five years from now. Maybe it'll be ten years from now, or forty years. How long do you think we're going to be around here yet? Eighty years from now. A hundred years from now, maybe for our little our kids, right? Or maybe for some of us. How are you going to live to be? But there's coming a time sooner than later that we'll be with the Lord. We need to live for him now. How are you doing this Memorial Day? Are you willing to be like Paul, to be poured out as a drink offering, to give your life to live for God? Are you looking to the commander? Are you involved in the conflict, in the confrontation against right and wrong? Are you in that battle for righteousness? Is your conduct that which pleases the Lord, the way that you're living as a soldier, as the commander walks by expecting the troops? What would he say of how we're living our lives? Is he your commander? Savior and your Lord? He says, he's my Savior. Or is he? have you accepted him as your Savior first? And in that, are you following him, giving yourself to him completely? Would you make him your Lord and Savior? How are you learning and teaching the life-changing Word? How are you doing that? I mean, challenge you to be in the Word and then to have something to share with others on Facebook, in texting, in conversation, driving for your own family. How is your Christian conduct? As we examine ourselves, as God looks at us and sees us as we are today, what does He see? How are we doing in that battle? Oh, we're all tempted, but are we standing against that? Are we striving to overcome and to live holy? Are we keeping the fight? what's right. In what areas are you on track? Let's be encouraged with that, but also what area could you use work in that Christian conduct? What part will you play in vacation Bible school or this church as we prepare to be back in the world? Take up the battle. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from falling hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it you stand with me as we have our closing song at the cross? 323. 323.